I remember once I came into the kitchen to get myself a drink of water and I saw a cup or a glass on the counter and I thought, oh, I left a glass of water there earlier. I'll just finish that. So I went over to the glass and I started to drink it and went, Ooh, it's vinegar. <coughs> You know, I should have sniffed the glass just to make sure. You know, it could have been anything. Oh, my goodness. You know, I need to learn to make better distinctions before I just grab something and drink it. Well, I think in Leviticus chapter 11, God is teaching the Israelites to make distinctions between the holy and the common. And if they can learn to make distinctions between what God says you can eat and what God says you can eat, then maybe they'll be able to make even bigger moral distinctions and better choices in their life. And I think that's part of what's behind these dietary laws in Leviticus 11. There's also a hygienic factor as well. But we're going to go ahead and check that out. Leviticus chapter 11. <laughs> Some of the foods here. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, say to the Israelites, by the way, if you want to start memorizing a verse, from the Bible, you want to have it be your first verse, why not Leviticus 11.1? 1? The Lord said to Moses and Aaron. You could say, I memorized the Bible verse today. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron. <laughs> Hopefully you'll move on from that one. Say to the Israelites, of all the animals that live on land, these are the ones you may eat. You may eat any animal that has a split hoof completely divided, and that chews the cud. There are some that only chew the cud, or only have a split hoof, but you must not eat them. <laughs> the camel, though it chews the cud, doesn't have a split hoof. It is ceremonially unclean for you. The coney, though it chews the cud, doesn't have a split hoof. It's unclean. The rabbit, though it chews the cud, doesn't have a split hoof. It is unclean for you. So, not supposed to eat rabbits. Oh, here's the hard one. Verse 7. And the pig, though it has a split hoof completely divided, does not chew the cud. It is unclean for you. Oh. How many of you like bacon? <laughs> How many of you love bacon? <laughs> I'm not kidding. One time, I can't remember if it was me or Jeannie or my mom, but we went to a restaurant and we ordered a bacon salad. <laughs> And the whole thing was bacon on top and hardly any lettuce below. It was like the best salad ever. <laughs> it really was a bacon salad. But here, you, you can't eat bacon. And the pig, though it has a split hoof, doesn't chew the cud. It is unclean for you. In verse 8, it emphasizes it again. Don't even touch their carcasses. Again, there there was a hygienic aspect to this because it was, you know, trichinosis is not just something that can happen now. It was very difficult to keep pigs hygienically safe even back then, but or especially back then. But I think more behind this is making distinctions and learning to trust and obey God, even if we don't understand why he says what he says. I think that's the greater purpose behind these things, to teach people to trust and obey the Lord. And we'll get to the New Testament and how this relates, whether or not these are still binding now. Of all the creatures, oh, spoiler alert, they're not applicable now. Of all the creatures living in the water of the seas and the streams, you may eat any that have fins and scales, but all the creatures in the seas or streams that do not have fins and scales, whether among all the swarming things or the other living creatures in the water, you are to detest. And since you are to detest them, you must not eat their meat. Man, that means you can't eat shrimp. How many of you like going to bubblegum shrimp, you know, once a year or once every couple of years down in Chicago, Navy Pier, or down in Florida or some other big city? Gatlinburg, Tennessee has a, a bubblegum. It says here, you can, if it doesn't have fins or scales, you can't eat it. That rules shrimp out. Oh, you give up. Verse 13, these are the birds you are to detest and not eat because they are detestable. It doesn't give a reason why you, you can't eat these birds. God just says don't eat them. The eagle, the vulture, the black vulture, the red kite, any kind of black kite, any kind of raven, the horned owl, the screech owl. 
You know, some of these laws I don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind God telling me not to eat an owl. How many of you have been tempted lady to have lately to have an owl for breakfast? Oh man, I've got this deli delicious breakfast sandwich with Canadian bacon and an egg on it. I've got buttered toast and jam. But you know what I really want right now? I wish I could have a fried owl. <laughs> I don't think there's anybody out there doing that. So I'm okay with this stuff. Can't eat, verse 17, the little owl, the cormorant. I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing that right. The great owl, the white owl, the desert owl. I almost want to throw in Mr. Howl, the osprey, the stork, any kind of heron, the hoopoe, and the bat. You know, it is not a hardship for me to obey God and not eat bats. <laughs> I'm okay with that. We're good, God. Verse 20, all flying insects that walk on all fours are to be detestable to you. There are, however, some winged creatures that walk on all fours you can eat. Of these, you may eat any kind of locust. You know, so John the Baptist is okay. He was eating locusts. Katie dids. Oh. Crickets. Grasshoppers. Oh. Yeah, we went to a candy store up in Door County, and you can buy candy crickets. They're like real dead crickets inside lollipops. Oh, oh my goodness. Somebody's a little too excited about these laws. Verse 24, you will make yourselves unclean by these. <laughs> no kidding. Whoever touches their carcasses will be unclean till evening. Whoever picks up one of their carcasses must wash his clothes, and he will be unclean till evening. You know, verse 26, every animal that has a split hoof not completely divided or that does not chew the cud is unclean for you. All the animals that walk on all fours, those that walk on their paws are unclean for you. And by the way, some people think Moses got it wrong. Insects don't have four legs, they have six legs. So how can he say walk on all fours? Or the worst, they'll say God got it wrong. But it's not saying the, the insects only have four legs, but that it only walks on four legs. Like a grasshopper has six legs, but it primarily walks on four of them. So I, I think it's talking about how it moves, not how many appendages it has. Verse 29 of the animals that move about on the ground, these are unclean for you. The weasel, the rat any kind of great lizard. How many of you are upset right now that God doesn't want you to eat rats? <laughs> oh, man. I was, I was hoping to get some rat today later on at Chick-fil-A. Just kidding. I love Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I'm going to go on a serious diet after this chapter is done. <laughs> I'm not going to want to eat anything for a few hours. All right, verse 30. Also says, don't eat the gecko, the monitor lizard, the wall lizard, the skink, and the chameleon. You know, I have not yet to this day been tempted to munch down a chameleon. <laughs> it, it hasn't hit. Verse 31, of all those that move along the ground, these are unclean for you. Whoever touches them when they are dead will be unclean till evening. When one of them dies and falls on something, that article will be unclean put it in water, it'll be unclean till evening. If one of them falls into the clay pot, everything in it will be unclean and you must break the pot. You don't want that stuff in there. Verse 34, any food that could be eaten but has water on it from such a pot is unclean and any liquid that could be drunk from it is unclean. So anything it touches can be, un be unclean. Verse 39, if an animal that you are allowed to eat dies, anyone who touches the carcass will be unclean till evening. Verse 41, every creature that moves about on the ground is detestable. It is not to be eaten. You know, that rules out your, like, worms, snakes. You ever see Capricorn 1, the movie with O.J. Simpson, and they had to eat kill a snake and eat. anyways verse 42 you are not to eat any creature that moves about on the ground whether it moves on its belly or walks on all fours or on many feet it's detestable in them low-lying animals do not defile yourself 
by any of these creatures. Do not make yourselves unclean by means of them. Why? Why all these rules? Let's look at verse 44. Here's why. <clears throat> I am the Lord your God. Because I said so. Consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. These dietary laws will distinguish you from the other cultures that don't have the almighty, all-powerful God directing them. Verse 45, I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore be holy, because I am holy. Four, verse 46, these are the regulations concerning animals, birds, every living thing that moves in the water, and every creature that moves about on the ground. Verse 47, you must distinguish between the unclean and the clean. That's what these laws are about. Teaching the Israelites to distinguish between what God says is good and what God says is bad. And when you learn how to do that with physical items, you'll be able to make choices of what God is directing you to do with spiritual choices. Hebrews 5, verse 14 says, Solid food is for the mature who through constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So by learning the word of God, the solid food of scripture, we can learn to distinguish good from evil. And this is teaching us to distinguish between what God says is yea and what God says is nay. Now, do we still have to obey these laws today? Are you committing a terrible sin? By eating a bacon salad? Let's go over to Mark chapter 7. I'm going to bring this up on my iPad. I love reading books on the iPad or the phone because I can make the print as big as I'd like for my old 54 year old eyes. I can even change the font. Here, Jesus says in Matthew, in Mark 7 17, Are you so dull? Don't you see that nothing that enters a man from the outside can make him unclean? For it doesn't go into his heart, but into his stomach, and then out of the body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. So Jesus is saying, you know, I'm the Lord, I'm the Son of God. And I'm saying that these distinctions do not apply to the people of faith. What really makes you unclean is what comes out of you, not what comes into you. The Israelites needed those laws to learn how to choose between the holy and the common. But now you have the Christ with you. You have the Son of God with you. You don't need the dietary laws to teach you to make distinctions. You got me in your life to teach you to make distinctions. And in Acts chapter 10, the Lord tells Peter in a vision, do not call unclean what God has made clean, referring to the Gentiles, but using food as an object lesson. So, well, isn't that interesting? I, I had a lot of fun with this chapter. We'll be back tomorrow with Leviticus 12. Jesus loves you. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. You guys have an awesome day, and God bless.